So in this video we're going to look at the noise rejection capabilities of the differential amplifier. So in this I've configured the, the amp to have R1 equals R2 equals R3 equals R4 and I've got a bridging resistor value of 2K2. So I've set up a white noise source here and I'm feeding it into both inputs. So this is common noise, there's no phase flipping going on at all. So the same noise is applied to this pin as it is applied to this pin. If we run the analysis, we'll see the noise itself is approximately 1 volt peak to peak going in. And on the output, we can see we've got a very low level there to zoom in and take a look at that noise and we've got approximately four four millivolts peak to peak so pretty good so just to demonstrate what happens if we uh, if there's a mismatch between the input impedances if we change this one say to 2000 run the analysis again you'll see that the noise has indeed increased because there's a, a now a mismatch between the impedances so often what we'll do when we're really interested in the noise performance is add a little trimmer resistor here to make sure that the um, this value is going to match this value here um, so that's the first point second point is this if I just get rid of the noise sources for a second uh, connect up the inputs then put this back to 3k often when when we have a, a single source so this is um, driving into the the cold input and this is the antiphase signal that's driving into the hot input if we want to think about um, you know which what this sees looking in then often what we'll do is we'll, we'll sort of ground this input and, and just consider this path so if we consider this um, cold input initially the cold input we see the 3k resistor moving forward we also see this um, 2k if this was 2k2 if this was grounded um, in parallel with this but essentially we'll see this um, 3k resistor looking in here. What does this see looking in here? Well this sees again ignoring this 2k2 this sees this 3k plus this 3k so in actual fact this one sees 6k whilst this one sees 3k so in terms of um, a differential drive or balance drive there's often a, a mismatch between both sides. Now what we could do to highlight that, if I run this and I look at the levels uh, going in there and there, you'll see that this signal is slightly higher than this one because this total impedance is going to be higher. So this is approximately 6k, this is 3k. So we don't see, or we see more signal transferred into this, this hot input. How might I get those to um, match up a little bit better? Well, I could do something like 1500, 1500, and rerun. And you can see that's dropped down slightly. So, and we're still, if we look at the, the output, we're still getting the, um, Oh, almost two volt peak to peak swing and actually we're still satisfying R3 and R4 ratios in terms of you know R3 over R4 equals R1 over R2 so we're still satisfying this but the one thing that we've messed up a little bit is the uh, common mode input impedances so if we go back now to the you know whilst we've kind of balanced up the differential inputs. If we go back to the noise, so if we disconnect that, disconnect that, and reconnect the noise sources. Let's have a little look at what that might give us. These two equal 3K, we saw pretty much four millivolts peak to peak noise. So if we run this again, 
What do we get now? Okay, so we get roughly 30 millivolts peak to peak. So we've kind of rebalanced the differential inputs, um, but we've increased the, the noise somewhat. So there's always a, well, a balancing act between noise and matching of, of impedances. So that hopefully gives you an indication of how to go about analyzing and also the, 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 the trade-off between matching the impedances completely uh, or not. So if I connect everything, So now we've got the, the noise and the signal running through. Um, we've got 3K, 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 3K. If we run this now, have a look at the output. Noiseless, if you like, but obviously the, the noise is going to be superimposed on there somewhere. And because this is a very large value, it's going to be quite tricky to, uh, to see any noise in and amongst there. But, you know, it just proves that you're getting um, pretty reasonable performance by just keeping these values identical. If you're practically building this circuit, because of the percentage um, tolerances on resistors, this is why you need the little tweak resistor here to give you um, the ability to match um, impedances.